Hi, David Charney here from eLearningLocker.com. I've been working on a project for my company, Lumen Group, in Storyline 2, and I knew it was complicated. There are certainly a number of layers and things that have to kind of work in a certain order, but I still thought it'd go pretty quickly. I, In fact, I thought it would take about three days to uh, put the entire thing together. Well, it's been a week now since I've started it, and I've worked on it a good number of... Uh, of uh, hours almost every day uh, to get around the many, 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 many bugs that I've run into. And uh, while uh, I'm not done with the project, which is here behind me, I thought I'd really quickly talk about some of those bugs and um, maybe see what you all think. Maybe there's some uh, different approaches that uh, you have in mind that uh, I could take. So I thought I'd start off with where I'm currently at on this project. Uh, now, I'm, I'm in Storyline 360 now instead of Storyline 2. I really wanted to build this in Storyline 2 because, you know, we're still kind of transitioning to 360. But honestly, I couldn't, I couldn't do what I needed to, so I had to switch. Um, there are some things that at least I consider them bugs that I don't see in 360, and so that's the direction I had to go. Um, now, I, like I had said, this was originally built in Flash, and so... I've seen a lot of people use this, and they've enjoyed the simple interactions that are there. It's not a lot of clicking. It's I just kind of wanted it to feel a lot more natural. So, um, and there'll be a challenge here. Basically, this person has to make their own drink um, following a procedure uh, in a certain amount of time. So, um, there's a couple spots on here you can interact with, and there are a couple more, uh, like a, a couple of espresso cups here that uh, I don't have in the scene yet. But I can come down here, I can click this picture, bring this up, I can pour, I don't have the final GIF yet, but I can take this uh, picture off the, the blender and put it back. I can release it, I can come back down and grab it again. Uh, I can grab some ice and drop the ice in. I can put the lid on, mix it, and that'll be the, I can stop the mix. Ultimately that'll lead to it kind of pouring this into a little cup and telling you how well you did. Um, so that's what I've put together so far. Uh, you know, very simple clicks to uh, interact with this scene. Uh, that's what I want, and I've spent a lot of time in Storyline to uh, get this outcome. So let's jump into Storyline 2 here. Um, I can show you how this was put together and the, the, the problems I was running into. Um, so you'll see a couple things here. Let me run this. Okay, so the way this works is I've got, and you can imagine this being completely invisible in the actual uh, project I just showed you. Uh, the fridge opens when you kind of roll over it. Um, you click on the little picture version that you see there, but that ultimately disappears and you get a version that you can click and drag. And the reason it shows up when you start to drag is that I've got a little frame here. So when that image hits the frame, it says, okay, I want to show, or I want to change the state to a version where it's 100% visible. Um, so now I can drag this anywhere in the scene, and when I come over here, I'm going to hit this hot spot. When I hit that hot spot, that little square, you can see it start to pour. When I drag it over to this frame, it stops pouring. So again, pour, stop, pour, pour, stop, pour. What we ultimately want, and I can show you with this box, is to hit that little square and change the state. And then when we hit this square to change to another state or change back. You'll notice though that when I come at it from this side, because I will ultimately be rolling over both of these, these kind of hot spots that I've created at the same time, the triggers don't work as you would like them to. I know I'm over that that frame, but I do want something to fire, as the trigger says, when it hits that square I'm just about to hit. So as I hit it, see nothing happens. And I'll just keep moving and moving and moving, and there it goes. So there's obviously some sort of calculation that's taking place that's not allowing that to happen exactly when I want it to. I can understand them over two objects at once, uh, both have the same kind of when uh, dragged over trigger, uh, but still I'd, I'd want something to fire once I'd hit the perimeter there, and it just doesn't happen. So 
you know, to have something that's I want very specifically to pour over a certain object, I, I, I can't do it in here. Um, and I assume there's some little calculation going on under the hood. Maybe um, it does seem to slightly relate to where my mouse cursor is, but not always. Um, if I come at it from this side, you can see my mouse cursor is not coming off that object. So there's some sort of offset, probably some offset calculation uh, that is taking place that's throwing things off a little bit. So we thought maybe we can use like a little pinpoint hotspot. So this was the original object, this little blue box here. And then, see, I actually have to click on it to even get in the state. Um, and then uh, I have a bigger object that I imported into the state as we went, or as I built this. So do I, what's going to happen? What's the user in store for? Are they going to roll over this whole object and be able to drag that whole object over? Are they only going to be able to drag over and click on this little hotspot, this little original box? Because obviously that would be too small for most people to, they'd, they'd keep missing the box or it would be frustrating. They, they would think they'd be dragging it, but it wouldn't happen. If, is it the whole picture that I can click and drag? And if so, then uh, will it just be this little hotspot that can be in between here? Because if that's just a little tiny little spot, almost like a mouse cursor point, um, which you can't, which I know Storyline has when the mouse is over an object, but the trigger won't fire when you're dragging something around. So I would love to see that to be functional. That would help. I mean, that would solve the problem. Uh, but in this case, what would happen? Um, so I'll run this. And first off, I notice I can actually click anywhere on this object. So that's great. Um, but it isn't just that tiny little object that will act as the hotspot in this case. It's the entire object just like I've, just like I've been doing. So that doesn't help at all. Um, now, I will say in Storyline 2, that doesn't help at all. That does seem to uh, work the way I expect it to in Storyline 360. I can have a little object there, and um, that obviously makes it so that I can have this frame be a lot tighter, ultimately only needing to be slightly bigger than this box here. And I can control my interaction, uh, my drag and drop in the states that I want to fire, I can control that so much better in Storyline 360 just because it recognizes that little square. Of course, now that I'm in uh, Storyline 360, I've got objects intersects and objects intersection ends, so I can use those as well. Now, just to have a little fun here, um, I was trying everything. You know, maybe I can only have one object on screen at once, and when I click and actually drag this over, I'll have uh, this frame hidden and once I hit it then I'll show or I'll go to a state or I'll go to normal from hidden so that you can see this frame but that doesn't work when you're actively dragging if the object wasn't on screen when you started dragging uh, like the actual object it can't be hidden uh, it won't work so what I tried to do was I used a little motion path to slide this object see this is another little bug this is strange. See, this square should be up above, and it should slide down when I hover over this, which it does. So since that object was, yeah, what? I don't know what's up with that. Um, anyway, um, you can see once I hit that little object, and it, it happened just when I hit the object because the other object was not, uh, not uh, I wasn't rolling over two objects at once. Um, it works great. And the other object slid down from the top, and now when I roll over that other object, that second frame turns off the, uh, it changes the state again. So that's great. Um, I did run into a couple issues with that, but that actually worked. I just don't want to do it that way. That's quite the complicated way to do it. Now let's take a look here. This is, see, this should be up here. This, 
Did I somehow move the center? No, I didn't because when it runs, it starts up here and it comes down. Anyway, so that's a weird little glitch. I'm not sure how that happened. Because again, it won't be over here. Real-time bug. Bam. See, it jumps. Anyway, that's a weird little issue. So the other thing I wanted to show you is when dragging an object, the click is not when you actually click the mouse. It's when you release the mouse. So a click trigger happens when you release the mouse. And I've, I've used that a number of times before. So I would expect that when I release the mouse now, I have a trigger that says hide this layer so that this picture and the hotspot disappear. But it doesn't. It just drops down. Uh, you know, there's some other thing going on under the hood to set it back to its original position. So it kind of skips over my trigger. Well, that's not what I want. I want it to hide all of this. So I don't know if this is a bug or this is just the way it was kind of programmed. I do have a hide layer when the user clicks. And that seems to be skipped. So what you can do is you can say, well, I want it to hide the layer when I click outside of you know, let's say this object, or in the case of my actual project, I put a hotspot way off the stage here. So now, if I run this again, I can roll over this, I can click. As long as I'm not on that little box, when I let go, it hides the whole layer, and I can keep doing this 100 million, billion, trillion times. I suppose I've not tried that. But it, it, it works very well. Now, I want to show you one more thing in Storyline 2, a big issue I was having. The way this works is I've got a hotspot here, and when I roll over that hotspot, I show this layer. So if I publish this to HTML5, you'd expect me to be able to roll over this. I get this object. I come up here. I can you know, hit this object here. I can release, and it goes away, you know, it hides that layer. Now I'll just come back over to here, and you can see that I can roll over this, and it will never come back. The on hover to show this layer will never come back in HTML5 and Storyline 2. I've tried to reset the layer, I've tried to reset this object, I've tried to hide and show and uh, do all sorts of things. I cannot get this to come back. It works great in Flash, works great in Storyline 360 HTML5, does not work in Storyline 2 HTML. Again, I'll release, goes, goes away just as I expect, will never come back. So again, just to take a look at what I've ended up with so far, and again, I'm still building this, but I can roll over here, I can come up here, I can pour when I'm over the uh, picture as I, as I want it to. Um, I can click and release some little things I'm still going to do to this. But I can grab the ice, drop the ice in when it's over a certain hotspot. I can put the lid on. I can blend. Um, you know, it works. It works very well. Um, it's just these tiny little things really have set me back and caused a lot of frustration. It feels very nice that uh, it's now working, and I found a number of workarounds. It's been quite the experience. I've never run into this many little issues, little hurdles on a project. Um, usually it's continue forward, continue forward, little step back, continue forward. I've had to redo this thing like three times um, to the point where it's, it's probably a little messy now under the hood in Storyline, but I'm not going to worry about it too much right now. I just don't have the time to uh, redo it again. But... Um, you know, three, uh, Storyline 360 on the surface doesn't have as many updates as uh, I was hoping, but there are a number of little bug fixes that uh, have helped me out in the development of this project. So um, I'll keep you all in the loop. If you see anything, if you have any ideas on maybe you could try this or maybe you could try that, I'd, I'd love to. I'd be happy to. So I should have another video soon where this is kind of polished, uh, functional the way I want it to be. And uh, I, I look forward to showing you how that works and, and the rest of the stuff that I had planned or have planned to, to build into this project. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button.
You can also hit subscribe to be notified of new videos when they come out. Also, check out eLearningLocker.com for a ton of storyline templates, more videos like this, articles, and really anything e-learning. And finally, I'm excited to tell you about a new podcast I have with my buddy Nates. He's a brilliant storyline and uh, e-learning developer, and it's called The E-Learning Guys. You can check it out at theelearningguys.com.